Um, so I'm Austin. Uh, I live in Georgetown, Texas, north of Austin, Texas. Uh, we have an Airbnb management company um, that we do for investors. Um, and then I'm also a uh, mindset business coach. Um, Dimitri's uh, my right-hand man is actually in the group tonight. I just saw him come through on the chat. So uh, he runs a lot of my company. Thank him very much. Um, but yeah, I'm Austin. Uh, I grew up in Houston, Texas. Uh, when I was in my early 20s, I spent time in the uh, food and service business. And in the food and service business, uh, one of the things that comes synonymous with that business is uh, alcohol and drugs. Um, so in my early 20s, I uh, had a little bit of a drug addiction, uh, methamphetamines, and then uh, was homeless briefly. Um, I wound up kicking the hard drugs, uh, but then I um, was a functioning alcoholic for 20 years. Um, and I have been sober now since for two and a half, two years and two months. Um, and I've lost uh, over 70 pounds. Um, so I've lost eight pants sizes, 70 pounds and um, have reinvented myself to say the least and uh, just love what I do and, and love coaching my clients and, and everything uh, that I do is so important and just being able to network with people and uh, I've used you know, better part of 22 years of intentional networking, what I call intentional networking, um, to build relationships in the business. And, um, you know, there's not a town or there's not a city that I don't have somebody that I know that can get something done for somebody. And, and I, I, I do that on the back of my, my networking and all that. So, you know, that's basically my story in a nutshell. I didn't want to take too long there. Yes. Thank you very much, Austin. That's awesome story. Losing 70 pounds. I can't even imagine how it, it would feel like losing 70 pounds. So, and 20, uh, you said 20 years of alcoholic. I, so please tell us like what motivated you or what caused you to uh, change yourself? Like w how did you get out of that vicious cycle? So call it. Well, I, I think at some point you have to be tired of your own bullshit. I think that you have to stop lying to yourself and tell yourself that you're just getting by like mediocre is fine, you know, and you're still going to work. You're still doing all the things, but you're not living up to your dreams. And when I joined my first mastermind group, um, I got around high level people that had 30, 160 Airbnbs, multiple syndications, multiple things. And it was the first time I was around people that, uh, you know, had bigger dreams than me. And so, uh, and some of them were sober and I was like, Hey, well, these are sober professional guys. I think, I think I can do that. Um, uh, and then I, I started a business with two gentlemen. We quickly grew that to managing 27 Airbnbs in six months in seven States. Uh, that was pretty crazy. And uh, they were sober at the time. And, and that's how I got sober. And it was, a, it was a wild experience from just doing real estate in San Antonio to doing real estate um, across the country, California, Florida, everywhere. And uh, it, 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 it definitely taught me a lot about just business and life. Um, but something I pride myself on, something I'm very, very intentional on um, is my networking and one of the things that I have always pride myself on is I make sure that I know what everybody does. So like, meaning I'm not just out there like saying, Hey, what's in it for me? I'm asking, um, you know, like I'm asking Nico or you like, what type of properties are you looking for? Who are you looking for? How can I help you? One of the things we love doing is going on clubhouse and getting a big room together and going, how can we help you today? And there's, it's amazing when you start pulling everybody's resources together, how we can solve a problem for you. And what I tell everybody is like, if you're needing somebody, like you might be new to the game, but, but like somebody might've already done that for you. And so it's just as simple as asking the question. And then, um, you know, my favorite Jim Rohn quote is that he says that, uh, you know, what the top 1% does is they ask. Like meaning that you ask your goals, you ask what you want out of life and you ask what you need. And like, sometimes we're very prideful and saying, I can handle this myself and that, and maybe you can, everybody's got to learn somewhere, 
but uh, I love my network. I love what they do. You're just providing value. And I, and I have some stories around that that I'll share that are out of the box, pretty interesting stuff. But I didn't want to just talk the whole time if anybody had any questions or you had questions. Sure. Well, I want to start with, I want to start asking about your uh, real estate journey because most, uh, most of the people here are interested in multifamily or either, either real estate in one way or the other. So mm -hmm. what, um, how, how did you get into the real estate game? So, you know, it took me seven years. We had eight deals fall through. Three of them fell through uh, two days before closing. Um, and, you know, I never thought I was going to buy a property. Like I was so frustrated. Uh, we just couldn't get one to come across the finish line. Um, and then the last one that we had fall through, my agent at the time told me that like, maybe you should put a pause on it. You should wait for like two years. Uh, and I told him to go pound sand. I was so pissed off for him to say that to me. Uh, and that night I was waiting tables uh, and it was a gentleman's anniversary. And he said, I told him the story because it was fresh in my mind. And he was like my age. And he was like, oh, that's terrible, dude. He's like, tell that realtor he sucks. And he's like, he's like, I'm a realtor. He's like, I don't even need your business, but I know a lender that is a bulldog. And so call this person. So I called this person and she was like, I think I can get you approved. So we wound up like, I didn't even, uh, my, my now ex-wife, but I didn't even let her look at the house. Like I just bought, I just put an offer in sight unseen. I was like, I don't care, this is perfect. We're going to get it. And um, we wound up closing on the house. It was a three, two, um, just a regular house in San Antonio. And then I wound up buying two other houses in, the, in nine months after that. So it was like, we had to get that first one across the board, but we started uh, Airbnb in an air mattress in our third bedroom. Mm -hmm. And then uh, I got a trundle bed. So we got real fancy. We, you know, we got the trundle bed. We got real fancy. And then when I, she had to move to Houston. So I was like, maybe I can Airbnb the whole house. So I Airbnb the whole house. Briefly, I was sleeping on an air mattress in my buddy's apartment, like with everything and working like 80 hours a week and like cleaning the house. And um, then we slowly added a second property and we did like 60,000 gross that year. And then we added a third and then we, we wound up doing 113,000 gross that, that second year. And I was like, oh crap, like we, <laughs> we stumbled into something. And then, but I was still working 60 hours a week uh, and I was still cleaning all the Airbnbs and working my job. So it was, it was pretty wild. So um, we definitely proved out the model, but realized that we had to put in some systems to scale for sure. Okay, great. Well, you just mentioned you were working at the time mm -hmm. that you had a W2. Yeah, I was, uh, I was waiting tables. Yeah. Wow. And then you were able to still build up that Airbnb portfolio. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we were still built. And then when I, when I joined the mastermind, I got around guys that had like 18 and 40 Airbnbs and they were like, wait, you're still manually responding to the guests. Like there's, there's algorithms and like platforms for that. So they like gave me this thing and, and then you could like auto message the guest. And then like I added in, I still had keys and they were like, no, like keyless locks and cameras. And so I did that and it changed my whole life. I was like, oh my God, this is so amazing because mm -hmm. it's responding to the guest. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's when I knew I could scale up even higher because like that gave me the technology I needed to, to do, to do you know, more properties. Right. I want to, I want to stop you right there because this is very important guys. Oh, tell us more, a little bit more about automation because uh, you guys need to think about the concept of automation. If you want to scale up, we start mm -hmm. by doing everything ourselves in the beginning, just like Austin started, you respond to tenants calls, you, if they call you, you got to go and fix the toilets and all that. Some people enjoy it. Some people don't, I don't. <laughs> so, mm -hmm. Tell us a little bit about the automation part, like how well, automation it helps was, you. So it was crazy, right? So, so, so imagine, imagine me working on a Friday, Saturday from 9 a.m. to like 11 o'clock at night. And I'm, I'm responding to Airbnb guests while I'm working all day. And these guys were like, so there's this thing called super host tools. And I was like, what's that? And they're like, it's a, it's a thing where like, say a guest books, and then you have your dedicated response and it would send a message to them. And I'm like, mm -hmm. hold on, what now? 
and I, they're like, just do this. And they like walk me through it. And, um, and so anytime somebody books or like they're checking in two days prior, it would send it. Right. So it's it was only five bucks a property and it changed my whole life because I never had to remember, mm-hmm. uh, if the guests were checking in and it felt a, a weight lifted off my shoulders, but that's not what did it for me. And this is one of the most important stories I'll tell. So I'm cleaning all the Airbnbs. I'm working two jobs now at this point, two jobs, a travel job, and I'm cleaning them. I'm cleaning them at 3 a.m. I'm cleaning them at 2 a.m. I'm cleaning them at 10 o'clock at night. And I was like, man, I'm saving, a, I'm saving the company so much money. This is so great. Like how much great. And so my mentor at the time made me do the math. Like, okay, you're saving so much money. So how much money do you think you've saved, you know, per, per, per uh, hour? And so we back everything out. And I found out that me cleaning the Airbnbs, I was making $2.10 an hour. <laughs> and so I almost got sick. Uh, and that's when I hired a cleaner right that day. And uh, it changed my life forever. But automation tools, technology, and leveraging out the jobs that I didn't need to do because I thought I was saving money changed my entire business. Great. And now you said, what, 27 properties now? Yeah. So we did have 27. Long story short, uh, we grew really fast. And um, it was maybe my ex-business partner. I I don't, there's no need to throw anybody under the bus, uh, but we were making a lot of money and we didn't know where the money was. Mm -hmm. Um, So I wound up having to leave that company and we lost, and I lost personally $27,000 by leaving that company. But, uh, but I learned that I could do whatever I wanted to do. And I, 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 you know, I took it on the chin for a little bit. I I went and worked private equity and now we have a different business model. I only do a million, like 800,000 and above like million dollar properties, like large scale, Airbnbs, like I, my client just closed in Montana uh, on a couple acres. So we're, we're, we wanted to pick the investment that matches the lifestyle that I want instead of just picking business to do business. Because I was realizing that I didn't like um, what we were doing. I didn't like the way we were growing. I didn't like what I was doing. I was, I, people don't understand. When we had that thing at scale, I was getting 80 to 120 messages a day and I didn't like it. And so the numbers didn't make sense, like gross to net profit. Now our business, uh, it's uh, 45 minutes South of Glacier Lake on uh, Glacier National Park on a lake. Um, So in Montana. So we, uh, we found out that these bigger projects might be less, but our net to gross profit for managing now from is goes from 500 to 700 to 1000 now we're making 1500 to 3 3500 a property so we could have mm-hmm. seven or five and be financially free as a company instead of managing 40 and it going crazy great i think that's a great concept where you work less but still you make more money because mm-hmm. you're targeting different different types of properties right and here's what's hard. Here's what's hard. And they don't understand this. I must turn down three to five management a week because I have my avatar. I know exactly what I'm looking for. And I have to stay away from the business that doesn't suit me anymore because I've chosen a lifestyle that I'm trying to create. And my, me and my business partner are trying to go after. And so it's harder because these don't close as much, but our clients are amazing. They asked me to come travel to Montana and like Mexico and, and like, it's, it's the lifestyle I want. And, and over time, I know it's going to pay off so much because we're doing exactly what we want to do instead of just getting business to get business. That's great. That's great. So it's one way you're kind of scaling up to a different, different market, I guess, more mm-hmm. luxurious, right? Yes, sir. Okay. Mm-hmm. What, what is your next goal? Like, I know you're targeting million dollar houses now for Airbnbs, but what, what is your next goal? Then? So the next goal, I'm actually getting into business with um, some, some gentlemen out of Kansas City. Um, our, my goal and my dream is to build our own Airbnbs. 
So we're actually getting into the construction space. So I'd like to go build my own. And then we're also looking at some Airbnbs down in Colombia right now. So the actual country, not like, like yeah, Colombia, South America. So, oh, so international. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That that's hey. my big dream. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Nice, nice. Mm -hmm. hey, okay. hey, Austin, who's the uh, clientele for that international? Let's say down in Colombia. Is it going to be Colombians or is it going to be international? It's going to be international. I think what we're going to do is we're going to rent first. Um, we found amazing uh, condos or something for like 250, 300 bucks a month for six months. I have a friend down there who's from California who lives there. And she is going to, we're going to test the market to see the demand. And then we're going to go from there. Um, I just kind of want to see if it's there first before we fall in the water, you know? Gotcha, man. Hey, gotcha, man. Hey, uh, so I got, oh, we might, it seems like we might've almost lost you there. You, you flickered, but Hey man, so I got my property down in Nicaragua. I would be delighted for you to go down there. There's a bunch of other properties also that are available in that space. If you were hey. to- you know, I mean, look, go hey, ahead. Hey, listen, <laughs> hey, listen um, we're going down to Costa Rica March 12th. I might have to extend the trip a little bit and go down to Nicaragua. Yeah. yeah by, by the way, guys, this is my co-host, Nico. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I just went to introduce. Chris. <laughs> yeah. You guys might think like, who's this guy just jumping in asking questions, right? Sorry, guys. No. Hey, I love you all. You all are so wonderful. Sorry, I spent a little extra time getting my daughter to bed tonight. It was a little, uh, there was a little challenge, but I appreciate you all for being here. You're all beautiful, wonderful people. And Austin, I love you too, my brother, man. I love your story. Thank no, you. I appreciate it. No, it's the truth, man. I totally will talk offline about that. I would love to look at it. Um, it's, it's, it, she has specialty in retreats and travel and everything. So I might, She's going to help us with our international stuff, but, but, but to, to get off, to not to get off the Airbnbs because I'm happy to talk about it, but just to talk about relationships and kind of like Nico and, and, and Yosef, if you could tell me like the group kind of like, are they all, is it, everybody wants multifamily syndication. So this is obviously a relationship multifamily business, you know, right? Yes. Yes, definitely. Um, I want to ask you one question, Austin, you I heard, I already heard three or four times you already mentioned about mastermind. Mm -hmm. How important was it to you for your success that you surround yourself with like-minded people? The, the, there's no price tag that it could be put on my mentors um, in GoBundance. And, and, you know, it's amazing to me. I look at my life now. I would say that 70 percent maybe 80 percent uh of the people i hang out with are from mastermind groups and, and not you know the traditional people that that i that i maybe went to college with or anything like i'm hanging out with other real estate investors um and they have just taught me so much more and opened my eyes um and then my podcast obviously meeting with like-minded individuals has changed my life i mean it really has i'll, I'll tell you two stories um, that are really near and dear to my heart. Um, I met my mentor on Instagram. Um, I heard him speak at an event and I was like, I like what this guy's about. Like, I like what he's delivering. And so he said, um, he said, listen, I'm very, very busy. He said, I got 15 minutes. Um, if you want to, if you want to make it happen. And so I, uh, was in, I live in Texas at the time. He lives in Sacramento. So I flew to Sacramento for a 15 minute meeting. Um, I, I did. I, I just flew wow. <laughs> and uh, I, I met him at 8 a.m. Uh, he was a millionaire at like 27, 28, flipped a ton of houses. And um, uh, we, I went and had coffee with him. And we sat there and we wound up talking for an hour and a half, you know, but it was only supposed to be 15 minutes. But he said something to me that changed my life. And he said, Austin, me and you are no different. I just got started a little sooner than you with the right mentors. Mm -hmm. And for me, that was like, I had this guy up on a pedestal and he showed me that it was no different me and him. Right. And then a second one, this is my favorite one. So this other guy came and talked on, on our mastermind and he had a ton of energy. He was doing flips. He was doing wholesales. He ran a brokerage. He was just I mean, he was nuts. He was crazy dude. 
And I was like, I got to meet this guy. I don't know how I'm going to meet him, but I got to meet this guy. So I'm DMing him on Instagram and I see a picture of him like coming down to San Antonio with his wife. I didn't know his brother lived where I lived in San Antonio. So um, I saw from a picture what bar he was at and I am in the restaurant business. So my buddy runs the bar. So I sent over the table a, a round of drinks on me and I was at work. I was still at work. And um, so he messaged me and he was like, how the hell did you do that? I'm like, ah, it's just my trade secrets. That's all. And so I met him and then he went back home and I said, hey, uh, I really want to spend the day with you and, and walk around with you at work and see how you're doing. He's like, man, people ask me this all the time. Like, sure. Um, so, so this goes on. And he's like October. And he's like, hey, I'm busy. I can't like in November. I can't December. I can't. And so I was like, all right. So I just went and bought plane tickets to Arizona and I sent him a message and I said, I'll be there January 6th, figure it out. And he said, okay, okay, okay. Like meet me at 5 a.m. at the gym. Let's go, let's go. So on his Instagram, on his Instagram, I saw that he liked Cadillacs, right? So I went and rented a 1966 Cadillac DeVille on 20s, like pimped out and I showed up to his work with it and he like started crying. He was like, what the hell dude? Like, this is amazing. Like, Oh my God. He's like, why did you do this? And I said, cause when I leave here today, you're going to know that Austin Lenny was here. Man, and, that's, that's crazy. <laughs> and it only cost me 130 bucks. And we went to a mastermind that a day with like 20 people. He told that entire story at the mastermind and like everybody's like oh damn that was crazy and like he still talks about it but yeah. uh but but yeah you just like but the thing is is it's not the obvious thing but something i want to something i want to tell people i need to get better at this d i know d's on the call and i apologize d because meech has left us in the lurch but uh we do have an i don't use it as much as i should i should i'm gonna get back to it but we have an air table chart so air table is a is a is an app you can use um, where we we schedule our podcast, but you can also set up papers. So anytime you meet somebody, you we put in their name, their last name, their email, what they do. So it has like nine boxes. You check what they do. But the last line is the most important one. If I were to get this person a gift, what would make them smile? And it's not the traditional gift. And when when I load that up, it goes to an Excel spreadsheet. So all of our contacts are in an Excel spreadsheet. And if you're not, if you're not a, a, a networker, or, I mean, if you're in the business, you need a CRM, some sort of CRM to keep your contact. But, but keep something in there that's going to distinguish yourself and, and you're going to give them something different. Like, like, for example, somebody that's really wealthy, you know, somebody that's out there and doing that, like they don't need all the stuff. But like, it might be like, uh, you know, like I remember this story too. I've always remembered this story from Airbnb. There's plenty of houses to rent in Scottsdale, right? Plenty of houses to rent. Well, this guy was in the tech business and his family was coming out and they rented houses for like two months. So the guy that was renting the house to them rented a bouncy castle for the kids for like an entire month. And the guy was like, oh, damn, that was like pretty great. Well, it just so happened, this guy was like the biggest, one of the biggest tech dudes in the country. And he has rented the same house for three months every summer for nine years straight. And like, what did that one bouncy castle do for him? So like, if you're going to do it, make sure people know who you are. Make sure you show up on time. You show up, you know, what I always tell everybody, if you're going to an event or you're networking or your mastermind event, have three or four people you want to meet before you come. And then once you meet them, you can leave, but don't, don't, don't try to fill your calendar with too many people, like have an intentional setup of like, I'm trying to go find this person. That's great. I mean, he, literally guys, Austin just dropped so many nuggets. I could like pick and choose here. So first things I, things I remember from what he says is you got to make it happen. You know, you saw Austin flying, you know, from one state to the other, just to meet and just to have a meeting uh, for what, 15 minutes with someone? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Second story tells me that you just threw it out there. Like, yeah, I'm going, so just meet me there, right? He couldn't refuse because he already knew that Austin knocked on the door a couple of times already. 
-hmm. it's not like Austin just showed up in front of him without making any effort. He actually locked, knocked on the door for four or five times and he was being persistent. This is very important, I think, in this business, especially if you're into a multifamily or any other real estate business, this takes time. So what I learned is you got to fall with the process, not the result, because yeah. unless you injure the process, right, Austin, you're not going to make yeah. it. Do you, do you mind if I, I'm going to tell a story because everybody's in multifamily here. Go ahead. And, I only, Go ahead. And, I'll, and I'll, it's not my story, but it is a story. And I'll say it for my boy who's in Brazil right now traveling. Adrian Salazar, who is one of my favorite humans. He's 24. He lives in Texas. He owns 188 units. So they had, he had the biggest week of his life. 88 units, he's closing, he's wholesaling 33, he's selling 16 in the same week, right? He doesn't talk about money, but he was going to make some good money. Well, the deal, the guy doesn't live here, he owns a bunch of apartments, the deal was going to fall through. Now, I don't suggest everything in this story, I'm just throwing this out here, because um, some of it's a little sketch, but he made it happen. So the, it's Thanksgiving, the guy says, I'm not giving you an extension, you're not buying it. You didn't come through with this and uh, you're not getting an extension. And he's like, no, 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 no. That's not, no, 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 that's not working. So he knows the guy lives in Lubbock. So he hops on a plane on Thanksgiving day. He skipped traces his address. He's got 16 addresses in Lubbock. He finds the house with all these cars out front and everything. He knocks on the door in the morning. Nobody there. Knocks on the door in the afternoon. Nobody there. Comes back again the third time knocks on the door and the wife answers and she says what are you doing here like who are you what are you doing he says i'm adrian salazar i'm coming to buy your property like i need to talk to your husband he said she said no he said that the deal is dead move on and he goes no i don't think you understand your your husband has to say that to my face and so she says fine come back tomorrow and so he comes back tomorrow at nine o'clock he sits on at the kitchen table with this guy for seven hours. And he's like telling him his whole story, telling him everything. The guy loves him so much, gives him the extension and then invest in the deal as an investor in his own deal that he's selling. <laughs> and then he's That's going great. to, and then he's going to invest in future deals. That's so great. yeah, it's crazy, man. But bottom line, again, that story tells us that this is all Schumann relationship. We do business. Sometimes people tend to separate business side and personal life. But if you really want to be successful in this, Austin, tell us if I'm wrong. You need to be able to look at this as one side, right? Well, not only that, and, and, and I've, I've hung out with enough multifamily syndicators. This bit, you know, I'll tell you another story that I heard. So we put an offer on 153 units. And the broker has been in the business like 30 years. And we were just talking. We were just, you know, we were walking. We were talking. He says that he had a guy who was worth like $100 million who said, I'm going to invest in multifamily. He says, I'm going to go bid on double A's and I'm just going to pay for them. And the guy says, no, you're not. He goes, it doesn't work like that. He goes, I got to groom you. We got to buy some B's. We got to flip them around. We got to sell them. We got And so what it made me realize is that multifamily is not all about the price. Like I've heard too many stories of people getting $50,000 off less or something or getting the deal done or hanging on to them. But, but here's the most important thing in this whole thing. And I learned this from one of my old bosses. You tell people exactly where you are. You don't lie. Like you tell them like exactly where you are, what you're doing and be, you be transparent with them. Cause if you're transparent, then they'll open up to you. But if you're lying or you're trying to get something across to them or trying to hide something to them, business is crazy, you know, and, and stuff happens. So, you know, never give, on a, never give up on a deal, but also understand that, that like, if, they're, if they like you, if they're more inclined to like you, then they're, they're probably more inclined to do business with you. Yeah, great point, man. Hey, Austin. So I, I also want to point out, there's a, there's a bunch of questions in here. I'm going to start touching on, on them. Sure. But I wanted to point out to everybody out there that there's something inside you that might not be in everybody because you've made a lot of serious sacrifices and changes. And, you know, it comes back to that old saying, you know, that, you know, when the student is ready, the teacher will appear. 
And if people out there are still in under the mindset of me, 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 and I'm going to do everything for myself and I'm going to be sure. rich and wealthy, you're not going to make it. You know, so somebody like you, Austin, who just dropped everything, opened up your mind to a new world and was such a giver. That's when when your life started changing around. And that's when I mean, you have just been able to accomplish so much more than so many other people because of your mindset, because of your open and, and go giving attitude. So thank you for that, my man. Yeah, yeah. And I think ultimately, and I, like a full disclosure, like I've had a fucking shitty week. I mean, like, let's not lie. Like it's been a testing, testing week because here's my thing. I don't like to let people down. Like I know how long people waited to come on my podcast and to have to reschedule. Like if everybody doesn't know, Texas is like basically closed right now and, and the internet's terrible. But, but understand that like I'm never perfect but I'm always trying to get better. Right. And, and, and that is the truth. And what I try to tell you about scarcity, right? Like the scarcity in business, that's the biggest thing. And scarcity in business, you're letting the universe know that you don't, you don't deserve it. And so, you know, you have to get better every day. You have to understand that um, this great guy, this uh, one of the best videos I've seen, he said that if you believe that every week or every deal is the next best deal of your life, then you'll be exactly where you need to be, right? And, and understand that you're not going to retire off of one deal. You, so, so it's going to be a combination of a lot of deals over and over and over again um, that are going to get you there, right? And he, one of the things that, that was very interesting, right? He said that um, he just did it for fun because he didn't understand it. So all the rich families in America... The, the Rockefellers, the, you know, all the Heinz. He said none of them had, had, had continued to grow wealth in the third year, like the, after the third, you know, set of kids, and, but the Rockefellers. And he said, what did your grandfather teach you that the others didn't? And he said, my grandfather always said to sell early. He said, because momentum in business, you can't beat because there's always another deal. But if you hold on for too long and you lose, losing is going to hold you down for two years and you're going to have to rebuild your empire, but take a little bit and don't count other people's money. Take the win and move on. Dude. I, I love that, man. You just gave me the chills. I'm actually writing a blog post as we speak of, of uh, general generational wealth. And what it really means to me is not handing down money, but it's handing down the knowledge and the ability to, to be business minded and, and to be, somebody who can create something for their own life with in financial intelligence, not money in your hands. But uh, so Kyle's got a great question. Kyle McGrath, do you want to unmute yourself and ask it? And if not, I'll do it. But I would love to hear your wonderful voice, Kyle. Sure. Yeah. Um, I kind of forgot what I, what I exactly <laughs> asked, but basically something along the lines of someone who's just starting out, you know, looking for mentorship or um, to connect with people, oftentimes you feel kind of inadequate because you don't have much to bring to the table, it feels like. What would be your suggestion for, for someone just starting out? Um, you know, at the end of the day, what I tell everybody is one thing you have to do is not ask, like not worry about why they would help you, right? Because maybe somebody helped them or they're not in a position, but also more importantly, understand that if they don't have time to help you, it doesn't mean that they're, they don't want to help you. Maybe they're just busy. And so what I've always done is, you know, one of the things that they always talk about in sales, right? It's like, bring me a deal. Like, like forego, if let's say you brought somebody a wholesale or syndication, right? Like forego your fee to learn, right? Because learning is going to teach you over that. And so that's why I tell everybody. So like, you know, if you need the money, like, of course, take the money. But like, what I'm saying is like, how about I forego some of this? And like, what, like, let me ask, uh, what real estate are you looking to, or do you focus on? Um, I'm becoming very interested in apartment syndication. Okay. Yeah. So the family. Yeah. So, so, you know, at the end of the day, there's different aspects of multifamily, like property management, um, syndication, um, so on and so on. But I think more importantly, like just being around the groups that are doing it and just seeing where you fit and what your skill set works, like everybody has a different skill set um, and understanding that if somebody doesn't help you, it's not that they're maybe, you know, maybe they're just busy or they don't want to, but somebody's going to come along 
and just add value as much as you can. Like maybe you go around and you uh, drive for dollars and you, you find a couple buildings that have tall grass. Maybe they could be, you write down the address, you try to get a you know, conversation going with the owner. Let's say he says, hey, I agree to meet with you. Well, then you have the most important part of the deal, which is the, which is the deal. <laughs> so you can go to anybody you want and be like, here's the deal. I don't want any money for this but I'd love to be a part of this deal. Can you teach me from the inside out? And, and typically I, I think that they would be happy to because everybody in a, in a, in a different setting in business don't have, like, I'm not going to go hunt down a wholesale deal. It's just not in my, it's just not in my uh, wheelhouse. I don't have the time. Um, but I, but I help young kids that do, and maybe they bring me a deal and then we do the deal together. And I teach them like, like, uh, we're working on, like, I really want to do an RV park slash cabins and stuff. Well, anytime I say that, you know, three guys are like, I'll work for free because they, they understand they want to, they want to do that too. And so, you know, that's just, uh, that's just how you got to do it. Awesome. That's, that's great, man. Thank you. All right, let me see if we have this here. Yeah, we got more questions, guys. If you want to unmute yourself, they have some really nice yeah, questions. Why don't you guys unmute yourself and ask a question, Austin, directly? Uh, actually, I think he just left, but uh, was it Andrew? No, it was uh, Dan Millen was asking. He was asking about if you use any CRM or anything like that. We, so we're re rebuilding my website right now. Um, HubSpot is free. Um, that's what we're going to use because it integrates in with my, uh, with my website. Um, we've actually been using MailChimp for our events, which is free as well, um, to track emails and then be able to send out stuff. I, I need to get way better with my newsletter, like my, my updating and stuff. So that's something we're trying to work on. Uh, but but Airtable is a great resource. What do you use for property management software? Um, so for the Airbnb space, we use Smart B and B. Smart um, B and B. Mm -hmm. And what if it's not Airbnb? What if it's just like a multifamily building? Um, yeah, I don't. I don't do that, so okay. I, I, I wouldn't know. That's probably I, Nico or, or Yusuf. No, you're fine. Thank you, Austin. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Well, Austin, what will be says? I know some of the people are still not in the game yet. Probably they're just, just looking around without knowing how to start. Mm -hmm. What would be your best advice for the new, newbie or this, those who have no uh, experience at all but want to get into the game? You know, I, you know, my advice would be, this is this is what I, this is what I've noticed from just interviewing people and just noticing my friends, you don't have to be in the mega markets. Like I have friends who live in like Northeast Texas who did 22 million in, as an agent last year. Like I have a friend who buys, you know, six units in Bay City, Michigan for like $100,000 or like $60,000. Like, and then Adrian's down in McAllen just killing it. So if your money, like let's say you live in an Austin, a Chicago or LA, doesn't mean that you have to buy in that market. Like, like live where you want to buy where the numbers make sense. Like that's my, one of my favorite quotes. Mm -hmm. And so at the end of the day, if you could buy a house for 40 or 60 or $80,000, learn the ropes. This is what I truly believe. I truly believe the first couple assets are nothing but practice. That's all they are. Don't overthink it. It's just two by fours and a, and a wall and understand that as long as you've ran your numbers and you check with some people, get in there, figure it out, get your hands dirty, and then understand that at some point you have to get off the fence, right? I almost think that uh, uh, sometimes we need to take in too much knowledge before we buy. I would actually prefer that you don't have as much knowledge because then you'll just take action. And with action, with imp sorry, imperfect action creates amazing results. I love that, man, Austin. I love that. Great. Um, we are already hitting eight o'clock. Uh, the time really flew the best. 
Can I ask a quick question? Yes, um, yes, Andrew, go yes. ahead. All right, it's a two-part, Austin. First question is, in terms of getting into your first deal for someone who's new like myself, mm -hmm. understand what you said, live where you want to and buy where the numbers are, or buy where it makes sense. But with that in mind, with buying where it makes sense, do you suggest somebody go check out the area, spend a weekend there and understand what they're buying? Or yeah. is it something that could be done via online and just set it and forget it? Where, where do you live? Uh, New York City. <laughs> <laughs> are you in boston new york uh, no 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 i'm not in boston i just new york's hard that's all i was saying no, yeah, no uh, i'm from connecticut though i've been here for two years uh no but but i have some guys i can introduce you to for sure so so dm okay. me on instagram all uh, right one of my one of my good buddies lives up there he's a contractor and a mortgage broker in new jersey area and a couple guys in new york but but something that's interesting i have a friend who lives in utah and he okay. buys in ohio and he's never been there and what he uses is he uses a four prong approach. So the inspector is going to cost you three to 400 bucks. And he's going to give you a, you know, 35 page report. That's going to be your first buffer. Then he yeah. uses his agent is another buffer. Then he uses the contractor. So that's three people's eyes have seen it. And then the property manager. So he's got four people with four different points of view of the property and what they need from it. So he feels 100% comfortable once those four people hit. You, you have to treat your inspector as he's your buffer and you're only going to lose you know, a, a couple hundred bucks and you can back out of the deal. So it's, it's, it's really yeah. not the worst thing in the world. Um, but, but yeah, I mean, ultimately, um, uh, there's a, yeah, I got a bunch of different people in New York I can introduce All to. Right, we'll talk to you. Is Instagram... LinkedIn, what do you prefer? I want either, both. either or, either or, just Austin, Austin Linney. Yeah, yeah, Austin, can you tell them um, how people can reach out to you? Sure. Austin Linney on Instagram, Austin Linney on Facebook, Austin Linney on uh, LinkedIn. Um, yeah, just come, just come ask me questions. I'll introduce you to the right people. Um, I've got a lot of people in different markets. Um, okay, great. But the most important thing is that, that Nico and Yusuf are the man. I love them. They crush it, and I'm just honored to be here, and I, I can't thank you all enough. Thank you very much, Austin, for coming, and, you know, you dropped great stuff today, and I'm sure people were inspired and motivated. Yeah, Austin, I love talking to you, man. You, you always make me happy. You make me feel good inside. You know, there's a different level of vibe that I get from you than other business people, you know, uh, and to go back to what Andrew said, you know, I mean, look, this is what we're all trying to build as a business, and, you know, a lot of us don't go or visit the properties because we are literally supposed to be running a business of people and, and systems that can run things for us. Right. So that's the objective. Mm -hmm. Eventually you're going to have to, you're going to want to walk your property, well, but it doesn't have to happen more than, well, you know, what's in, you know, what's interesting. I interviewed somebody, I don't mean to cut you off, but I just want to, mm -hmm. this is very interesting is that, you know, at some point you're actually going to thank yourself by actually running your businesses remotely because you're going to be so much leveled up by the time. So use the people that that's what they do, meaning the house inspectors, the property managers, the contractors, and so on and so on. Use them because that's what they professionally are there for. Mm -hmm. and, and at some point, you're going to thank yourself when you've got 10 units and, you, and, you're, and you're sitting on a beach in Spain somewhere um, because you have a team that you cultivated and created. Mm -hmm. That's Love great. Just, just a little bit of my story too. My, my first apartment deal that's 44 unit is in Kansas and I live in New York City. I never visited that property. I have a boots on the ground partner there who looked at it, who videotaped it, who took pictures of it, went through all the inspections. And I'm here in New York City. We all together were able to close that property uh, and which, is very, which gives us a very good return. So I also want to emphasize the importance of the team mastermind, how it's, how it's really important to surround yourself with more experienced people. Um, and that's great. Great things are happening. If you become persistent. You know, Steph, are you a, are you a JV on the deal or a LP? Oh, that one, uh, uh, that one we do JV okay. on the deal. So yeah, everyone is uh, general partners on there. 
Um, guys, so just so you know, everybody's going to get a recording, the replay sent to their email. You also, you're also going to get some links to see Austin's, like, uh, his handles and stuff like that and his website and all that stuff. So everything will be sent in an email tomorrow. Um, I, we just got a question from Maria. Is there a market you recommend? I do. I recommend any market that you choose, as long as you go a mile deep and an inch wide. Okay. Don't just go thin on any market. There are so many good markets. It just doesn't, you know, don't get caught up on which is the, the best market, right? Just pick a market and go get really knowledgeable about it. Stick with it for at least six months to a year to really get, you know, your, your, your feet wet in that market. Right. And don't get caught up by any cap rates or anything. Cause you gotta, if you know the property and you can, and with the people who has a knowledge in the market together, and if you can add value to the property, you know, something like cap rates, something like this market usually doesn't work. It doesn't really matter. As far as my experience goes, there are always good deals hidden. So always try to team up with someone who knows the market if you're out of state. All right. So we're officially closing. Thank you for coming tonight and thank you for hanging out with us. Um, again, this was a multifamily uh, investors network uh, presented by Nico and Yosef shortly mini. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Thank, Thank you so much. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you. Everyone, bye. Thank bye. you. Bye. 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 Good night. Yeah, it's done. All right. Is Amani still there? I was answering. She asked a question about. There you go. Oh, she, yeah, money's here. Yeah. Uh, she asked a question about how do you find boots on the ground? My opinion is attend as many of these meetups as you can, and you find so many people from uh, all areas. Okay. That's yeah. how I found boots on the ground. Right. I'm going to stop recording here.